we begin our meeting as always with a prayer and pledge which will be led by our mayor pro tem heavenly father we gather today in your name we pray for your guidance for your wisdom for the many decisions we may have to make today and in the future it is your insight into the needs of our community that will help us make the proper decisions to help our city flourish. We ask that you keep us in mind and bless us with the kindness, the thoughtfulness, and the carefulness to address the matters that come before us. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> <laughs> That's good. No, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm something. Well, I shouldn't have been doing this. <laughs> Madam Clerk, roll call. Councilmember Forbes. Here. Councilmember Bryant. Present. Councilmember Bench. Present. Pro Tem Clock. Here. Councilmember Moore. Present. Councilmember Milne. Here. Councilmember Balls. Present. Councilmember Humphreys. Here. Mayor Browning. Here. Nine members present, zero absent. All right. And uh, just before we start, a reminder for the audience, I have uh, instructions here to read. It says, remain quiet and refrain from speaking, cheering, booing, or rude or obnoxious behaviors for some reason. This is a good time to silence your electronic devices, please, for the meeting. Reminder for council members and th those in the audience, please turn your cell phones so they do not uh, interfere with the meeting. And with that, Madam Clerk. Thank you, you Mayor. I do have an announcement. Uh, the last day to register to vote or to change your address is Tuesday, October 9th at 4 o'clock p.m. Contact the City Clerk's Office with any questions at 759-1480. And now we are at personal appearances. And, and if I could uh, ask for the, the council. Uh, indulgence here I have one more announcement that I would like to just quickly share uh, I think we have to do we're going out of order of the agenda can we do we need a motion for that you're continuing with announcement okay. Okay. Right? yes I would okay. and I, I am pleased to announce that our councilwoman Brenda Moore uh, at our the MML convention has been elected as the vice president of the Michigan Municipal League, which means the following year she will become the president of the Michigan Municipal League, a very esteemed position, and put Saginaw right at the top of MML. And I'd like to congratulate you. Right. Mr. Mayor. Do that mean that she's going to be bringing some money and projects here to the city of Saginaw within she the next year? She, she, she already has. She already has. I already has. She already has. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ahead. Thank you, guys. Just I wanted to make that announcement uh, sure. that we're very proud and uh, of that. Thank you, man. Okay. We're now at I, personal, personal appearances. appearances. And before we start, uh, as we begin tonight's business, we welcome your thoughts and your input. And when your name is called, if you come up to the podium, please introduce yourself and state your home address. To be helpful, let us know if you are speaking solely or on behalf of a group. All speakers will have a three-minute limit, which is timed by the clerk, so be sure to cover your main points. Hearing from our citizens we represent is very important to us. We ask that you speak slowly and clearly so we don't miss what you have to say. And finally, since you are speaking as a representative of all our citizens, we ask you to be courteous and respectful to the members of the public present, to the citizens watching SGTV, and to this consultant so that we can give serious consideration to your concerns. All follow-ups will be referred to city staff. Madam Clerk. Our speaker tonight is Angie Miller. Angie, welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Angie Miller. I'm the president of the Mid-Michigan Area Labor Council with an office at 1614 Mershon. Every September, the United Way of Saginaw County coordinates a blitz build 
day to install mobility ramps for the residents around the county. Two days ago, union members from across the region, along with their partners, representing several different unions, came together to install ramps at nine homes as part of Project Independence. The ramps provided and installed free of charge to the residents allow those with limited mobility the chance to easily enter and exit their own home. The ramps were pre-built as modules by the apprentices of the Carpenters, Local 706, and delivered by volunteers to their future home on Friday. Saturday morning, volunteers representing the electrical workers, the roofers, NABIT, CWA, the Carpenters, and UAW, and other organizations reported to their assigned sites and installed the ramps in just a matter of hours. Project Independence is in its 13th year of making a difference in Saginaw County. The ability to leave one's home after years of being unable to do so is certainly life-changing for the recipients. However, the program is also huge and makes a huge impact on the volunteers, many of whom come back to help every year. Volunteers with the program know that they're making a difference in their community and helping someone take back power in their own life. A project like this, however, can't sustain itself and make this large of an impact without support from across the community. From the coordination work done by the United Way's labor liaison, Steve Lamb, to the volunteers from labor and the business community who do the building and installation, to the donations from local businesses to feed the volunteers, to the community organizations who deliver those lunches to the work site, this is truly an effort of the entire community. I want to thank everyone who was involved in this year's Project Independence for their time, effort, and support of the program. To the recipients of the ramps, I wish you congratulations and know that your neighbors look forward to seeing you out and about. And to everyone else, I encourage you to make a note in your calendar for next September and come out and help us build another ramp. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, that takes us to the remarks of council. No, oh, and council members, uh, just a reminder, we have a five minute limit. And tonight we begin with Mr. John Humphrey. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I was just reminded looking at some of the information that's been shared on email that the city of Saginaw was found to be one of the uh, improving safer cities. Uh, we're number four on the list, if I'm not mistaken. It's amazing to me that uh, one group can take a look at the FBI statistics and talk about how things aren't so good in Saginaw, and then another group looks at the FBI statistics and notices how incredibly good things are getting. So congratulations to the um, fine men and women in blue who helped, well, maybe it's black now, who helped keep us safe. Uh, and I think the city is truly headed in the right direction in terms of safety, uh, a fact that is so often overlooked. So, again, congratulations to the police department for all the work that you've done. Thank you. And Councilman Michael Balls. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> I'd like to thank the uh, Labor Council and especially thank Angie, for your dedication to the city of Saginaw and helping out with the ramps for the seniors. And for all the other work that the uh, Labor Council do in the city of Saginaw, uh, everybody know, well, I hope everybody know, that labor is really a big part of the city of Saginaw. With all the plants that we have here, with all the donations that labor give out to uh, United Way and how we encourage our members to get out and be involved in the political process, and for all the many, many, many donations that they give to people like the uh, First Ward Community Center and things of that nature. So I just want to personally thank you and the rest of the Labor Council for the hard work that you do and the dedication that you have to the city of Saginaw. Thank you very much. Other than that, Mr. Mayor, okay. oh, I would like to uh, uh, say something about our high esteem, Ms. Brenda Moore, for getting that position here. Uh, Brenda, she gets the work done. Yeah. And I want to let you recognize you that publicly to let you know that I appreciate what you do sister thank you thank you thank you mr. mayor uh, just a couple of things to mention tonight uh, 
uh, in quite a switch from the usual where we often have people come up to this chamber and tell us how bad the road is in front of their house or their business, I wanted to pass along that I've begun receiving comments from the public about how the goods the roads are looking, the, the improvements are really showing up. And in, in making that statement, I want to thank the entire city staff from the manager on down because every department is in some way involved in this improvement. Uh, it, it doesn't just go to public works or something. Uh, finance people make sure we have the money to do the job. Traffic engineering. Uh, quite a few of these improvements, our own city staff are doing the work. Uh, it's not just contracted out work. And so it is making a difference in this very vis visible uh, amount of work the city's doing. Uh, the other thing that's progressed quite well is over at the old Baker Perkins site on Hess. Uh, the bad part of the office building and some sheds have been demolished. Uh, this is a project of the land bank. Uh, I believe it also involves some EPA funds. And this is a very good beginning to clean up of a long-term blight problem we've had there. And it will facilitate some improvement work from B and P Littleford, the owners and operators of the rest of the property. So that, that area is continuing to look better. <coughs> and that's all my comments tonight. Okay. Councilman Brenda Moore. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Ms. Miller for all of the work that they do and the ramps and, and everything that they've done. Uh, they are a viable part of our city. Um, as you know, I did I just got elected for the Michigan Municipal League. Uh, it was not an easy task, trust me. On Tuesday, when I went down, it was horrible. I've been dealing with health issues, so to go with that and deal with what I'm trying to deal with, it became really, really disturbing. But when I got there, it was like God's favor. It's like it's already done. Don't even worry about it. So we went into the room. And I couldn't wait to call my fellow council people who were there to tell them I got it. And the first thing I think said was, Saginaw is on the map. Um, this is going to be a real adjustment for the organization because now we're at the table. We're not talking about it. We're at the table. And I plan to do the best I can to represent the city as I do on a day-to-day -day basis. The workshop was gorgeous. We learned a lot. Saginaw was actually nominated for a, a prize for the our downtown market. We didn't get it, but it's okay. We still on the map. So for the, the next year, they will be advertising and letting everyone throughout the state of Michigan know about Saginaw's downtown market. Mm. So with that, thank everyone for their support, their prayers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, had an opportunity to join uh, my fellow council persons at the MML conference, uh, Mayor Browning, uh, Councilman Moore, and Council Councilman Bryant. And it was a really gratifying to have the opportunity to uh, observe and uh, watch as Councilwoman Moore was elected as vice president. So I, too, extend my congratulations to you, Councilman Moore. Thank you, sir. And my... I'm happy. It's really good to see that we are on the map. So thank you very much for your hard work. I also uh, want to uh, join in Councilman, Councilman Ball's congratulations to the Saginaw Labor Council and to Ms. Miller for all of what you do. Uh, I was able to attend the NAACP dinner last night. That was a fabulous event, a huge number of people, um, and it was very well attended and very well presented. So. I thank uh, the NAACP for the invitation and the opportunity to attend. Um, I do want to give special kudos to Fire Chief Van Lu. Last Tuesday, he brought almost 300 fire chiefs and firefighters mm -hmm. from throughout Michigan to Saginaw. They represented dozens of fire departments. And it was to hear a presenter, Dr. David Griffin, the battalion chief from the Charles, Charleston, North Carolina Fire Department, who uh, spoke about the importance of the safety protocols and training and how necessary it is uh, to our, the safety of our firefighters and the citizens. 
and he, uh, in fact, provided a real-life example of what can go wrong without adequate training and preparation. It was very sobering, but I think it was wonderful that we were able to have uh, Dr. Griffin here to present this, and thank you, Chief, for all you did to bring that uh, Dr. Dr. Griffin here and all the other firefighters and fire chiefs. I think that was very significant. Um, last, uh, I do want to mention Scott Nazinski and our scenic program who this summer created a Saginaw Neighborhood Recognition Award. Um, and the purpose was to um, award those homes and businesses that seek to, um, to maintain, uh, or have their property well maintained and manicured so that they uh, can show off essentially the city of Saginaw. And I think that's a very, uh, rather than having to just cite people for not taking care of their property, they were awarding people who do take care of their property. And that's significant because it's the positive and we should accent the positive. So I, was really, I really want to thank uh, Scott and Scenic for creating the program. Right now, it's my understanding that there's been um, uh, one finalist selected from each quadrant of the city for each month, and one grand prize winner will be awarded or announced in October. It's a wonderful program, and I'm looking forward to hearing who or which property receives that award, and I uh, hope that we're able to properly recognize that property. And my thanks to all the homes and businesses who have participated, even unknowingly, because this is not being done for recognition, but they deserve it. So. Uh, with that, I have uh, nothing further, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councilwoman Nanny Bench. Thank you, and good evening to everyone here. Um, thank you, Ms. Miller, for being here and reminding us of all the good work that uh, the Labor Council and our local unions do, um, consistently finding ways to give back. And um, a lot of people are indebted to you guys for, for that. So thank you very much. Um, and I want to congratulate Mrs. Or, uh, this is Councilwoman Moore um, on her uh, election to the vice presidency at the MML. We are lucky to have you representing us there, and the good work that you have been doing um, certainly deserves that recognition. So Thank you. keep it up, honey. Thank you. And that's all I have. And uh, Councilwoman Clint Bryant. All right, good evening, everybody. I want to start off by saying thanks so much for uh, Ms. Miller for joining us and letting us know that Project Independence is oh, uh, still going on. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for the work and all the volunteers uh, with lunches and everything like that that go into making a successful project. So thank you for that information. Also, my congratulations to Councilwoman Moore uh, on her election to vice president. But I have to tell you guys, being at this year's conference was, man, if you're from here, it makes your heart just flutter a little bit <coughs> because most of the time when we go to these conferences, uh, and like I said before, we wear these Saginaw pins and I wear mine with pride. And I tell you what, it was such a different, the vibes and everything in the whole room throughout the conference were so different. We had a great delegation, the most I think we've had in a long time, um, but it was just so good to see Saginaw shine. And I wish, and that's why I tried to go, uh, use Facebook Live as much as possible because I want that message to get out there. I mean, we had so much pride with our marketplace and all of the good things that are going on, not only for people from uh, E-Course to Escanaba, but people here in this Great Lakes Bay region. That makes us feel good that we have that seat at the table, that we're being recognized for the good things that are happening in Saginaw. So I just got to tell you guys that it was such a Beautiful thing. I hope we can keep it up. I'm looking at taking uh, a couple extra roles on with MML uh, if possible because I just see the value in that. So um, I tell you what, my heart was just so full when we left. We couldn't get back. Uh, it was this year's conference was in conjunction with the Michigan Association of Planning. I serve on the planning commission. And sometimes on the planning commission, we can have differing and opposing views. And we really get into the details of what our buildings look like when it comes to streets, when it comes to uh, where they're located, what we're going to allow in that area. So for some people, it's a little bit a little bit dry. But for me, who plans on being here for a long time, uh, it was really, really interesting. We talked about redevelopment communities. And some of the conversations that we had, it really makes you thankful for where we live. And really thank, thank you to the manager and, we, and his great staff because I tell you what, there's some, 
interesting stories out there, but when it comes to hearing Saginaw, we're changing that narrative. Conversation <coughs> to conversation. We're going directly to those leaders, and we'll be working in some of these communities, but always, by our heart, we'll be the city of Saginaw. So thank you guys so much. Thank you to my colleagues uh, for letting me go to that convention because it was just absolutely beautiful. I hope we all get a chance uh, to participate in some of what MML has because I tell you what, we are really going to be knocking it out. And thank you so much for Brenda for always advocating, always advocating. I'm moving on to level two, probably have some of level three done. So it's just exciting. So it's a great time to be in Saginaw. And I just wanted everybody to know that our hearts are so full and we're ready to get back to work. So thanks so much. Thank you. Woman Jamie for Thank you. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying that I'm just so very thankful for the warm welcome that I've received from uh, from city staff and from my fellow uh, council members. Um, I'm really excited to get going. I know there's a lot to learn, but but I'm ready to go. Um, I also wanted to congratulate Councilwoman Moore on her on her big accomplishment. I'm so pleased uh, for her personally, but also what this means for our city. So uh, much more to come on that, I'm sure. Um, I also wanted to congratulate the NAACP on their Freedom Fund Banquet last night. Um, I had a wonderful time. It was, of course, very well attended. Um, I really appreciated uh, the speaker, Judge Marilyn Atkins, um, and her message of, of uh, uh, the history of discrimination in, in this country, but also um, that voting is the way that we fight the hate in the world. Um, so that really hit home. I also wanted to con uh, congratulate the Commission on Aging on their first health fair um, at Horizons this past week. It was an amazing turnout, and I was happy to be able to be involved. Um, and then, of course, last, uh, the United Way uh, Project Independence Program is so wonderful. It is perhaps the most perfectly organized event I've ever been a part of. Um, and I know that Steve Lamb and Angie Miller and all of the union folks work so hard on that. Um, it's really about the, the quality of life of every person in our city. Um, and I know that uh, without that program, so many people would be um, so incredibly limited. Um, and just thank you again for doing that. And um, the organized labor community does so much work without recognition, um, just quietly. And so I know that this is just one of many projects that they've done. Um, and so I'm just really thankful for that. And, um, and I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Just a couple things uh, in the past uh, two weeks ago, yesterday, or a week ago yesterday, I, I attended the Japanese festival over there at our uh, tea house and grounds over there. Um, we waived the uh, condition of having a passport uh, to get to the tea house because the tea house actually is deeded property to Tokushima, Japan, uh, for as far as... Uh, uh, ceremonial purposes. Uh, no, we don't collect taxes from them, and they don't collect taxes from us at our gazebo in Tokushima, Japan. So it was a great festival. It was a, a well-attended, a very good festival. Um, I had the pleasure also of attending the, uh, the conference. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Floyd Clock and I had the unique experience uh, that we, 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 we set on the urban core, urban core of mayors uh, in the state of Michigan. There's only nine cities that are part of that. And so we sat with that and we had a, a closed session uh, with uh, Senator Kildee uh, to talk about our concerns. And then immediate following that candidate, uh, our Attorney General uh, Bill Schutte's office was there meeting with the mayors, the urban core mayors. Uh, and that's very important for us to meet with those and let them know our concerns and what's happening here. And believe me, they're all, they're, I, it was just amazing, they're all the same. They're all the same. And uh, we'll get into those later, some, some other time. Uh, anyways, so uh, I, I echo all the co comments from my council members to our speaker, to everyone else there. Uh, to Brenda, congratulations. Uh, and listen, Brenda wastes no time yeah. as vice president. She wastes no time. Yeah. Uh, MML will, for the very first time, hold their newly elected officials workshop here in the city of Saginaw, thanks to Brenda. We've always went uh, elsewhere, but for the very first time, that newly elected 
uh, officials workshop on November 28th will be held right here uh, in the city of Saginaw and right now tentatively it's scheduled here in the council chambers but we'll uh, we're still working on details so that's how fast uh, this this happens and it works and uh, so um, and you got to ask yourself how did that happen how did that happen it's always held in Frankham yeah and we pull it away from Franklin <coughs> here. So that's uh, that is a huge, huge accomplishment. So, congratulations, and uh, that's it, madam. Yes, that takes us mm -hmm. to the reports from the manager. Mr. Manager, <coughs> thank you. Uh, first, I wanted to remind everyone that the citywide meeting hosted by the police chief is uh, this Thursday at 5:30 p.m. Uh, the organization host is Sherwell Community Association, and it's at Freedomful Gospel Church, 2259 Williamson Road at 530, 530 Thursday. Um, and there's also on Wednesday, October 3rd, is the National Coffee with a Cop Day. Uh, so the Saginaw PD officers and uh, some MSP will be at Tim Hortons on Michigan Avenue from 7 a.m., to 10 a.m. for that event. Uh, we've been doing some on our own, but this is an opportunity to ask questions, voice concerns, and get to know the officers. I would also congratulate Councilwoman Brenda Moore being elected vice president. I know that was one of her goals once she started uh, uh, going to the MML event, so um, a great achievement, and I think she will um, have MML here for a lot of other events in the next few years. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry for cutting you off, but I want to let you know that that meeting was hurt. It's, it's not on Williamson. It's going to be on Sheridan at Pastor Campbell's church. Oh, is that, is that where it is? Yes. It's on my calendar wrong. 3121 uh, Sheridan Avenue. Okay. All right. Anyway. Um, Good. Thanks. The, uh, where was I? I wanted to also thank Senator Horn. He set up a meeting with us for, um, with MDOT and Jack Hoffweber, who is the manager for the Bay City Transportation Center, and um, it was to talk about some of the upcoming projects, and I think it's a good example of how um, our public works is working with MDOT. The, they were, uh, Phil Carwa attended the meeting as well and was able to um, talk about upcoming project in the city that we, we weren't really aware of yet, but it'll give us an opportunity to try to do projects simultaneously with uh, them and also see if we can leverage that to do some more work. So um, that was something uh, Senator Horn suggested a while ago. So it's good to have that meeting. Um, and then uh, Council Member Humphreys did mention the story that was actually from Channel 4 in Detroit uh, posted that. Um, and that four Michigan cities that were the top areas for decrease in the country for crime over the last decade. Saginaw was number four, and it was um, from, uh, took data from 2006 to 2016, FBI data for violent crime, murder, robbery, and property crime. Um, so with that, I think uh, the, the police department has done a good job, and I also would uh, mention uh, there are a lot of things that go into that, the impact that the um, uh, demolitions that we've seen in the city of blighted properties uh, we've seen through the studies at um, SVSU that has a dramatically significant impact on uh, crime reduction so we have to I think also um, that teamwork that we have uh, with the police department and scenic as well as the <coughs> land bank um, and Michigan State Police all have an impact on that decrease it was interesting to note as well that the study did not account for um, cities that did not include that missed some years within that 10-year period so um, we have uh, been reporting our data and the state of Michigan has and I would note that it wasn't in the story but um, if you look at crime stats there are a lot of areas that don't report them the way that we do in Michigan and I think we account for more of our crime statistics than a lot of other states do so I think that's another big impact uh, that having uh, Saginaw be in the top five on that decrease is pretty significant. Um, 
Ypsilanti was, uh, I think, number six, and there were two other Michigan cities that were in the top 25, but I think that's great for our city and, and the state as well to be represented. Um, with, in that same thought there, uh, the other programs that go into decreasing that time or, or decreasing those crime statistics, I would also mention the Community Ventures Program again. Um, the Sag Saginaw area, I think, has been the most successful in the state of Michigan at working with the, the Community Ventures Program. In total, there are 24 employers that partnered with uh, the, the program in the Saginaw area, and it resulted in employment for 2,126 people who are former offenders, chronically unemployed, and those living in poverty. And I think that is the most significant number in the state of Michigan for that Community Ventures Program. So I think the, uh, the businesses that are working with them, as well as um, Saginaw Future, works a lot on that program. And I believe that uh, Joanne Crary is the regional coordinator for uh, community ventures for this area. I think she might be on the statewide board as well. So I wanted to mention that all of that, I think, goes into impacting that crime in the city. So hopefully we can let the state know how successful that is here and that the, the, the next governor can continue that. So um, if anyone wants the address, we'll make sure we get that address out. We'll put it on Facebook for the updated address because it is on my calendar for the wrong address, so um, we'll make sure that our office puts that out on Facebook, that okay. the correct address for the Thursday meeting. And with that, um, that concludes the management update. Questions from the manager? Okay, Madam Clerk. We are now at the consent agenda. And the agenda has been available at City Hall and on the city's website and on SGTV channel 191. Need a motion to approve the consent agenda items, leaving room for exceptions. Move. Support. And moved and supported. Are there any exceptions? Any exceptions? Being none, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Mayor, we are now at reports from boards, commissions, and committees, and appointment of board and commission members. Uh, do any, re any verbal reports that you want to give from any of your committees or things you uh, on? Okay. I will, I will make, uh, mention one uh, because it, it's, it's in the news uh, late, uh, a lot, and that's the upcoming election. Uh, on election day, stars, all star transits will be free. So on election day, there is no excuse not to get out and vote. All you have to do is get on the bus and go to your precinct. So those are absolutely free that day. All ridership, all ridership on election day is free. Uh, so uh, it really serves our um, community very well. Okay, uh, we have uh, approval. There is one appointment. It's council reappointment of Dennis Browning to the Saginaw Transit Authority Regional Services Board with a term to expire September 30th, 2021. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Yes. That was moved and supported. Do we have discussion? Discussion. Yes. Yeah. So don't look at me like yes. that. So does this mean, Madam, go ahead, Madam, <laughs> Madam Vice President. Go ahead. Does this mean that you got to stay on council to 2021? No. No. Oh. Okay. No. 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 I, I, it, it's a citizen's business. Citizen business. Citizen. Citizen. We'll, 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 we'll still have Denny Browning to kick around. Yes, we get a minute. Um, I would like to abstain from the vote, considering my. Uh, position with stars. So you'd like a roll call vote? Then? Yes, Madam Clerk, can we have a roll call vote on the reappointment of Dennis Browning to the Stars Transit Regional Authority, Regional Service Board? Councilmember Vanch? Yes. Pro Tem Pot? Yes. Councilmember Moore? Yes. Councilmember Bryant? Aye. Councilmember Balls? Yes. Councilmember Humphreys? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Forbes. I abstain. Councilmember Millen. Yes. Mayor Browning. Abstain. 
Okay, we have seven yes and two abstains. Thank you. That's approved. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Next on our agenda, we have resolutions. Our first one is authorizing the public services director, deputy director, or fleet administrator to execute application for a title, odometer disclosure statement, delivery acknowledgement, and title at the time of sale. Need a motion to adopt. So moved. I moved and supported. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Yes. Uh, I would just like to know, are we delegating an authority that would rest elsewhere, or do we just always have to designate this authority to someone? Normally, I, I, I sign the documents for the city, so in this case, um, these documents come into right into fleet, so right. more convenient if if uh, the fleet administrator or director of public services uh, sign those documents as they come in. Thank you. Any further discussion? Being none, all in favor signify by aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Our second resolution this evening is authorizing the submission of a <coughs> concurrence to certain petitioners' requests for declaratory relief regarding the MDEQ's lead and copper rules. A motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Why? The move and support. Is there any further discussion? Being none, all in favor signify by aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, you have motions and miscellaneous business. Any business to come before our council to come from members? If not, if someone move to adjourn. Support. support. Been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Being none, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Those opposed? Word adjourned.